Hey there, this is Mark Leach with Keep Your Daydream, and if you've been following our journey, you know that we're on a six-month tour around the U.S., and right now, we're at a KOA right near Mount Rushmore, and one of the videos that I was searching all over YouTube for before we started full-time RVing is how to get set up in a camp. I knew nothing about RVing, I knew nothing about setup, I knew nothing about hookups. So I've been waiting for a location just like this where there's not a lot of people around, and there's grass, and there's a lot of space to shoot that video for you if you were thinking about doing full-time RVing or we're just curious on how the setup works. So we're gonna go through step-by-step -step of bringing the trailer in, leveling it, and getting it hooked up, getting the slides out, and everything you need to know. You can see we're already backed into our site and it's pretty level, but step one is to make sure it's level left to right and then it's level front to back before I disconnect. And I've made this mistake twice already. So one of the tools that's very handy to have is a long leveler. And I got this one just so I could be 100% accurate. But the other thing I plan to install is levelers right here and here, just as a really quick way as I'm backing in to make sure I'm level. So the first thing is I put it down here to make sure that I'm level left to right. And as you can see, this site is pretty good. And the second thing I do is make sure I'm level front to back. And as you can see, this site is pretty good also, but I'm also not disconnected. So once I'm disconnected, I'll have to do it again. Now, one thing you wanna do before you disconnect the truck from the trailer is chalk the wheels. Okay, so I've got these leveling blocks, which I've used for a lot of different reasons, but what's really handy is that I'm able to put them on under here to reduce the amount of time that I have to wait for this electric jack to go down. But in this case, I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use four. Because I have the weight distribution hitch, I'm actually gonna come up extra high so that I can make these chains looser so that I can disconnect. And I'll have an entire video on exactly this. But for right now, we'll stick to the, the setup. Now if you notice, those chains, because I had the hitch all the way up, just basically fell off. The first time we did this, and I believe we have it on video, this hitch was lower. And when I unsnapped these, the thing snapped down and could have broken my foot. So it's really important that this hitch here is as high as possible when you're disconnecting the load distribution hitch. Now one thing that's really important to mention when you're backing in the trailer is to make sure that you've got enough room between the electrical post, a tree, or anything that can extract the slide out. I now have done this three times where I backed in, absolutely perfect, got out of my car, looked back and realized that I couldn't pull the awning out completely or I couldn't pull the slide out completely. So now, the first thing I do when I back into a slot or back into a site is to make sure that I've got that I'm where I want to be on the front side with the awning and I'm where I want to be on the back side with the slide. Now when it comes to hookups, the first thing I hook up is the electrical before I move the slide out just so that I don't have to put any extra drain on the battery. And the other thing that we've learned when operating the slide is to always have somebody on this side of the slide. <laughs> So funny. Okay. okay. And the other thing that we've learned when operating the slide is to always have someone on this side of the slide when it goes in and out. And I'll tell you why. This door right here swings so far out that it can get stuck behind this ridge. And these hinges and door can get bent. Ask me how I know. It happened the first time on our trip, on a Sedona trip. And I'll link that video on this video right now. The other thing I've learned is when the door is coming in is this can get stuck behind here and it can snap this off. When it's coming out, it can hit some sort of obstruction or a tree or something else. And so we've learned to have somebody on this side as the slide comes out and a knock means stop.
Okay, now it's time to stabilize the RV. And in the case of my rig, I've got electric stabilizers. And I also have some extra leveling blocks where I'll put one or two underneath the feet just to give it a secure place to mount the feet. One of the things you wanna make sure you don't do is these are not designed to lift the rig, they're not designed to support it, they're just designed to make sure that when you're inside it, it doesn't wobble left to right. So you wouldn't wanna use these to lift the actual rig, they're, they're not strong enough and it'll probably pop a fuse. In this case, grass is a great example of having these extra leveling blocks where when it rains, and it just might today, that it would make the ground soft and mucky and dirty. The first thing I do is I hook up the water so that I don't have to worry about cleanliness or wearing gloves. And then once that's done, I do the sewer with the gloves and then I'm completely done. Wash my hands and we're finished. With the water, I have a fresh water hose that I bought specifically for this. It's only used for that. And I have a pressure regulator on the hose. The other thing I have is a splitter that I put at the source of the water. This way I have this extra hose bib if I want to wash anything else without having to disconnect. And we've got a water filter with a brass connection. So why don't we just start with that. The purpose of this uh, brass L shaped fitting is so that basically I can screw it in, that I can screw it in and basically keep the weight of the hose going straight down, not, uh, not, not putting any pressure as it comes off. The first thing I do is I turn on the water at the source and I make sure there's absolutely no leaks here and there's no leaks right here. And then, of course, if I turn this on. I can confirm that there's no leaks. Now that we've got it connected into the rig and we've got it connected here, I'm going to let the water slowly into the rig. That way it doesn't put too much pressure on any of the hoses. Okay, when it comes to sewer, I learned from Mark and Emily Fagan on Roads Less Traveled. They recommended these robust gloves. I will include the link on this page. Uh, they've been working great so far, and I bought them on their Amazon account. So I highly recommend these gloves. As I said, it's the last thing I do so that when I'm done with this, I can just wash my hands and be done with it. The other thing I do is I always carry 409 with me and the last thing I do when I leave the previous campsite is I spray down all the handles and the handles of this just to make sure. I don't know, I take extra precaution to not get sick on the road from some silly mistake. Okay, this is to hold what's uh, basically known as the stinky slinky up off the ground. And the reason I have it is because there are some, well, first of all, it creates better flow from the exit here and into the drain, but also there are some campgrounds that absolutely require it. The other thing I have is an extension. I've got a 10 foot stinky slinky extension. In this case, we're clearly not gonna need it today, but in most cases, or many cases, the sewer drain is so far away from this that I would not have been able to, have, I would not have been able to do the hookup without having it. Now, on this Rhino section that I bought, they're threaded, and that typically, these are, typically these are threaded. So it makes for a nice secure connection there. I'll just stay there. Okay. And then this fitting can go right in like that. In this case, it's really high, which is pretty convenient.
Now, the other thing I highly recommend is a clear elbow to connect into the sewer. And the reason is, it is really handy to be able to see what is coming out here. Yeah, it might be gross, but I could look at the color, and I know how much it's rinsed, and I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine not knowing what was going on in the tank. Now in this case, I'm gonna flip these around, which I've never had to do before. But you can see how convenient it is to have these because you never know the levels of anything. Mom, 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 mom. You have to go to this place. Whoever's watching, you have to. Okay, so it doesn't cost any money for um, the big, there's a big rubber thing and it's air. What? It's an air trampoline. Oh my goodness. And there's like stuff that I can pay for since I found 10 bucks on the ground. So we're gonna rent something cool, like a cool little go-kart. And we're gonna ride that over here, see if Tori will get on for a person go-kart. Man, these trash cans, these trash cans, I think mine's for Camco, are so convenient. And we just basically secure that on the front side of the trailer and have one of the kids take the trash out every night. Now, one of the last things that we're gonna connect is the gray water hose. And I have a gray water for the gray water line. Now, this right here is the Sani Flush. And I've got the gray line connected into the Sani Flush. So what I'll do when I empty the tanks is I'll make sure the black is completely full before I do any of this. I will, black, I will empty the black completely, then I will use this line to fill the black tank with water and I'll take it all the way up to three quarters and then I'll drain out the clear water or the clean water through the black tank. I'll do this one, two, or three times until I'm able to see that the water is clean. And when it is, then I'll dump the gray water and be done with the dumping process. This ensures that the black tank is always completely clean and have absolutely no issues. So there you have it, the outside of your trailer is completely done. If you have any comments or questions or things that you do that were missing from this video, put it in the comments because I'd love to know tips and tricks that you do to make it even better. And I'm sure Trish will do a video for getting the inside of the rig ready. And if you're curious about our six month trip around the states, then subscribe to this channel as we put out a video every week. And then every once in a while, I'll be putting together how-to videos just like this one, but from a new person's perspective, covering some of the things that I wasn't able to find on YouTube from very experienced people, maybe glossing over some of the details. What you got there? Oh, sorry. We need to go pick up Tori.